Hello, everyone. Welcome to this TEFL Org webinar on Facebook. Uh, my name is Carl. I will be your host for the next hour talking about how to set up your own teaching website. That's going to be the main theme as we go through the hour. But I am here to answer any questions you might have about TEFL, basically TEFL in, TEFL org, the courses that we offer, online teaching, going abroad to teach. Um, so please, any questions at all, please write them in the comments. Um, I must apologize for my hair. I need I, I need, to, need a haircut. I'm just looking at myself in the camera and realize that I've let my hair go on lockdown. So um, first of all, apologize for all the hairiness. That's what happens when you're working from home a lot. So please um, say hello in the chat if you are watching this live. Please tell me where you are in the world. Um, and just so that we know that there's some people out there, um, that would be really good. It is really nice to know when people are out there watching. So before I start talking about how to build your own uh, teaching website, let me tell you a little bit about me. I've been doing these webinars now for Teflorg for a good few weeks, um, probably months actually, in um, uh on a on Facebook on a Thursday or a Friday on a variety of topics. Um, online teaching tends to have been the theme that's gone through them. And I'm, I can see all the hellos coming in. Arthur in Belfast. Arthur, I'm in Bangor just down the road. I do the courses in Belfast. Uh, so hello to everyone. Right. Um, so basically, my job with Tefl Org is as the practical tutor over here in Northern Ireland where I live um, and I do that a few times a year as when the course is run in Northern Ireland uh, but that is just part of my TEFL teaching life. I also work as an examiner for a few TEFL boards, a um, few uh, international exams. I also do some online teaching. I'm currently doing some work with a university in the UK as well and um yeah i do a variety of different things and i love doing these webinars so let's just say some of the hellos that are out there uh, roland thank you very much for the hair compliment that was nice hello ed in rugby Bo in oxfordshire i'm from oxfordshire originally Bo, arthur the belfast chris uh, kirsty sorry in scotland sandy leighton buzzard i'm from helmer hempstead I, I was born in helmer hempstead not far from around there valeria in liverpool Venice or oh, Alston, that sounds nice. I bet it's lovely without too many tourists there at the moment. Um, uh, Laurie, hello in Basingstoke, Southern Illinois, Curlies, Tracy. There's loads of you out there. That's fantastic. I can't keep up with all the hellos that are going on. So if you have any questions, any of you about teaching online, teaching abroad, anything at all to do with teaching, um, I've been teaching for 15 odd years. Hopefully I can answer some of your questions that are coming in. OK, so the topic of this is about uh, building your own teaching website. Um, now, the reason why we've chosen this topic is because at the moment there's a lot of people contacting us that want to move into online teaching. And there are different ways of getting work is one of them is to work for a recruiter. And the other one is um, basically to set up yourself and go freelance and to try and get your own students that way. And that's the way that I worked as an online teacher and still do. And I built my own website and I put the website out there through various channels such as social media, Google, Google Ads, um, this kind of thing. And that's where I got um, a lot of my clients and students from so the, the first thing you need to think about is why do you want to have your own teaching website is it just to i mean probably most people do it to make some money that's you know the main reason to have a website so if you're going to have a, a website you've got to what do you want the students to do you want them to come onto your website and then you probably want them to book some sort of lesson with you OK, so you've got to go about thinking about how that's going to work. And there's different 
programs, different ways. Programs are probably not the right word to say, but there's different ways of creating your own website. You can go down um, the route of using some sort of website design company, such as uh, Wix, I think is is probably the big one, wix.com. And, and that's probably the easiest way to get yourself up and running quite quickly. Or you can pay someone to design it for you, which can be quite expensive. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Or the route that I went down is um, I started creating my own website through using some software that's built into a browser called WordPress. Um, and basically, I taught myself how to build a website through WordPress. And for me, it worked it's it has worked pretty well it's um it's it's allowed because wordpress gives you lots of functionality there's lots of different things you can add-ons that you can buy and which aren't, aren't expensive you know might be ten dollars here twenty dollars here something like that and you can then put like different mini programs into your own website and I put in, for example, I put in a calendar booking system into my website. And that is something that you can do relatively easy. You link it up with Google Calendar and you can keep track of your students and you can take the payment through that. So they're the three options, basically, to use a company called Wix, something like that. I think there are other companies. If you've got any other ideas for any, but WIX.com seems to be the big one. You can pay someone to do it for you or you can go down a hosting route and use something through WordPress. So what you would do then is to, um, if you're gonna go down the design your own route, you would have to go to a company such as godaddy.com. They're, they're the, the, I think the world leader in hosting websites. And you then they then have the functionality to do the WordPress and then you sort of teach yourself as you go through that and you, you know, you put some photos up, you maybe might put a little landing video on and then you put an introduction to yourself and then you create another page with your calendar with um, some information about you, that kind of thing. You just create a basic website like that and then you get up and running through that basically. And then hopefully once you've got that, you can um, get the students through that way. Okay. Um, I just got a couple of questions there. That I'm just going to break for for a second. Um, uh, Laurie, uh, can we have your website link? Right. Um, Laurie, I don't like to post out my website link uh, on things like this. The reason being is because I don't think that this is the kind of thing for me for me to promote myself you know this is the kind of question and answer for you guys and um i i think for me to throw my link out there it, it just it wouldn't really help and it you know it might be a bit confusing for people to go onto it so there are lots and lots of teachers websites out there for you to look at okay um so what you need to do is to choose a domain name and i think what you've got to first do is think about what your niche is going to be as a teacher. Now, by niche, if you've, you've what I mean is a part of EFL that you're going to teach. So, for example, I teach um, only quite high level students for a very specific exam that many students around the world take. I don't market myself as Carl the EFL teacher. I uh, market myself as Carl, the teacher that will help you get a high grade in this specific exam. And the reason why I don't market myself as Carl, the English teacher, because you might think, OK, well, why why would you go down a certain route? Just because you're discounting a big part of the market. And um, if you if you are, have a specific niche of I'm going to teach this particular type of English it can make your advertising a lot more streamlined you can focus your advertising a lot more so you spend less on advertising it also um, reduces your prep time so if you say you're going to teach all English 
then you've got to have some business English ready. You've got to have some general English ready. You've got to have some exam English ready. You've got to have some kids English ready. You might have to have some academic English lessons ready. You've got to have a lot of different websites. So a lot of different um, lessons ready. You've got to have a lot of different pages on your website talking about each of those. It just gets a bit too big, gets a bit unwieldy and takes up a lot of your time. Whereas if you've got a specific name, sort of, I don't know, Carl's um, presentationenglish.com, something like that. When students are looking on Google or wherever it might be, Yahoo, if people still use Yahoo, they Google the presentation English. That will help the, the search engines will be able to find you more quickly for that specific thing. Whereas we, I have found that students generally don't tend to type into search engines, improve my English generally. They're, they, they're, they're quite specific. Like I want to improve my spoken English. I want to improve my pronunciation. I want to improve my essay writing, whatever it might be. So I think choosing a niche and being quite specific about it will help you and will also help the students find you. So it reduces your prep time and it also um, helps the students to find you a bit more easily. So choose a domain name carefully, check it's available and then go go from there basically with how you want to build the website, either through something like Wix or something through GoDaddy or something like that. OK, I'm just going to have a little break here for some questions. OK, um, right. Uh, where are we going? Let me just read them. Hello, Julie. I'm doing the online course, but I would like to do a classroom weekend. When will they begin again? Um, yeah, I think they're beginning um, around August, September time. I think uh, someone might need to correct me who's working behind the scenes there. I know that I'm delivering a course here in Belfast in September. So I know but we don't run as many in Northern Ireland as they do in London. Depends where you are in the UK or around the world where we offer them. OK, uh, Julie, but 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 soon, I think as soon as we sort of get a bit more clearance, you know, they'll be up and running. OK. Um, hello, Matt. Uh, you've got some website experience. OK. Interesting one there. So you've got some uh, website building um, experience. That is obviously a good thing if you want to build your own website. But I had no website building experience when I launched into setting myself up as a freelance teacher so do not think that you have to have website um, building experience you will make mistakes if you're going to go down the wordpress building your own website you're going to make mistakes but what there are is lots and lots of help videos on youtube in order to help you get through the problems that you might have there okay um ellen hello do you think young learners and online lessons are compatible Definitely. Um, yes, I think that a lot of um, the lessons that are that are completed around the world are online are through young learners. And if you're going to go work for a company, you're definitely going to teach young learners, I would say, at some point. The reason why I think they are compatible is because quite often they are you it's kind of strange, but if you're going to go teach some in China for something like this, very often you'll see a room that you're looking through the screen into and there'll be two or three young learners within the room and you can sort of direct them around while they're in there. OK, so um, it, it definitely does work. Uh, quite often you'll see a parent off to the side somewhere and they will be able to help you depending on how involved the student gets. But definitely, I think um the young learners and online lessons are compatible and i think it is kind of the future in a lot of different ways i mean hopefully we will go back to classroom proper classroom teaching soon but i don't think that online lessons and young learners are going to go away anytime soon okay great thank you uh luby thank you very much for your point nana is that you're talking about when in madrid they're going to be starting again that's good uh, well done. Um, uh, right, Luby, I want to teach in Italy even before we move there. So website will be integral in our success. You're in Derbyshire. Okay. So yeah, I think that quite often um, 
student teachers do build a website not necessarily to get students but but maybe to sort of advertise themselves as a teacher for when they're local so i have got students in northern ireland who i've taught face to face one on one who've got come to me through my website so i think that um you can use it as an advertising tool for practical classroom classes as well as online classes as well. That is something that's worth thinking about. Um, OK, Ed, thank you. Uh, great point about Wix. OK, good. And you're talking about you need some students now. Let's go through that in a second. Um, Ma um, Martin, Martin Boyd. Thank you. I'm currently in Thailand as a TEFL teacher, but really not wanting to return to the classroom. What would you suggest? Well. Well, I mean, what I would suggest it sounds like, Martin, is that you need to set yourself up online, to be honest. If you don't feel like you want to go back into working into a classroom, um, why not set yourself up as Martin Boyd, the the teacher that can help tie students to get through um, whatever, you know, to get through to improve their speaking or to improve their writing, or whatever it might be that you feel like you want to go into more as a teacher. Um if you so you've got a choice you can either go down the online teaching route of working for a company um they might not accept you if you're in thailand some companies like people to be in the uk or to be in america or wherever it might be um or in a european country so you might have to set yourself up independently build your own website and see if you can get some students through that okay i don't know if that answers your question martin okay um who's he hello love that name how large can an online class be to be effective uh very good question um i don't like to do group lessons of more than about three or four in my online classes i think any more than that it becomes a bit um hard to manage them basically so i think three or four is is a good number However, I do know teachers that teach more than that, 10, 12, 14, 20, 20 students. And it's more then of more like a lecture, but they can break the students up and put them into breakout rooms, that kind of thing. But I personally like to think three or four. But um, it does depend on, on you and your style. You, you know, are you going to do lecture type lessons? Tend to not be very effective for language learning. Um, but students can pay less. They might just pay a dollar each to access it, something like that. I don't know. I prefer to get three or four to get the students talking to each other and then the technical difficulties of talking over each other and that kind of thing doesn't uh, doesn't get hindered and things like that. OK. Um, right. OK. Um, let me just talk because I can see some questions there about advertising. Let's just just go through. So you've You've decided how to build your website either through Wix or get a company to do it, expensive, be careful, or you've built it yourself in WordPress. How do you then go about finding students? So that's when kind of social media also comes into it. So I have a website and I also have a couple of um, social media pages, which I um, advertise myself through. So, for example, I would... Um, put some videos of myself talking, uh, given a little 10 minute lesson uh, on my Facebook page. And then I might have a link to my website at the bottom and through that, try and get the bookings, that kind of thing. Or you might um, go down the Google ads route and you would set yourself up to advertise for certain keywords. And when a student types in, I don't know, um, report writing English, something like that, you, you're, Google then make sure your website appears on the first or second page, something like that, depending on how much money you're going to spend um, on that. Now, paid advertising with Facebook or through Google, you've really got to you've got to know a little bit about what you're doing and start very, very slowly until you sort of get a grip to it, because you can just throw away money. I've I've found myself throwing away money on it, to be honest, to be honest. So I think you've got to really read up on uh, search engine optimization facebook ads google ads that kind of thing start very slow depending on how much your budget is um and just and just go go from that and start really slowly and then try and build it up so but i think the best way is to try and get that organic 
it's the it's the word they use natural basically way of doing it without paying by going into facebook groups by going onto twitter by going um onto instagram i've done that before and just try and organically push people towards your website and they get that whether they want to go to your website tends to depend on the the content that you make in facebook or instagram or something of the mini lessons that you're um promoting okay right um Okay, uh, Adele, so hopefully I've just answered your question there about advertising strategies. I think it is this this is where having your your niche as in what is you're going to teach really helps with your advertising strategies because it's very expensive and very difficult to advertise yourself as the English teacher. There's um, hundreds and thousands of the English teachers out there. Not all of them have websites, but there are hundreds and thousands of English teachers out there. And if you've got, if you're known as Carl, the something english guy or adele the spanish fix the spanish speakers pronunciation problems girl something like that you know if you go down that route it just makes yourself a little bit easier to advertise and students are, are more likely to come to you you might think you're limiting yourself but honestly just advertising yourself as the english person doesn't really work okay um uh irene someone's answered your question there which is perfect uh Martin, um, okay, uh, I would be interested in doing my own thing, online teaching or something, but my big concern is being a non-degree holder in Southeast Asia. So are you saying that currently you don't have a degree? But the thing is, by going out online, you bypass the, the need for a degree. A, a recruiter might want someone to have a degree in order to give you some work. Whereas if you're going out online on your own, you know, students have never asked me. I've got quite a few qualifications in TEFL up to master's level. I've never had a single student that's wanted to see my certificate. They've kind of just sort of trusted for me. OK, so just just going out on your own is, is a way to bypass uh, the degree issue, the non-degree issue. OK, um, so that's one of the reasons that's worth going out on your own. Get yourself a TEFL certificate so you've got a good basis. You're giving people good value for money. Um, but don't worry about the non-degree thing, okay? Um, Ridwan, hello. Almost done with my TEFL planning to teach online. Is it hard to get a position online? Um, okay, um, right. I don't think it's it's that hard, but it's not that quick necessarily at the moment. Um, you're going to find that there are a lot of people that are trying to work online at the moment. But if you've got the qualifications, if you've got some experience, if you're willing to be enthusiastic in the interview and in the videos and that kind of thing, um, then I I don't think it's that hard to get a position. But I think it's very, I think sometimes people think that you can pass your TEFL course on a Friday and you'd be working for a company on the Monday or the following Monday. At the moment, it's taking two or three weeks. There's a lot of people applying for the jobs, but there's also a lot of students. So I don't think it's that hard. Uh, Danish, African. What that sounds like a lovely mix. Uh, my accent is a mix of English and Danish. Um, well, I, th I think I think you'll you'll be okay. I think Ridwan, just keep going for it and just keep applying, and, and something will turn up for sure. Um, Adele, hello. Do you use hashtags on your post? What are the best ones you use? Okay, so I do use hashtags on my post. That's correct. And the ones I use are very specific to the type of English that you're um, doing. So if you're going to do, uh, I don't know, you're going to help someone with business email writing, hashtag business, business emails, hashtag improve your email, something like that. I kind of make up your own, go along that route. Also, just, just play around on Facebook because you can do hashtags on Facebook, play around on uh, hashtags on Instagram, find where there's lots of mentions of it and go with that find your niche and just go with that okay um i'm not an expert on hashtags i'm probably a bit too old for a hashtag but i'm giving i'm giving it a go anyway uh graham hello did you make your own website if so how much did it cost right um right it, it, it money economically uh i did make my own website yes i use something called wordpress right how much does it cost uh it costs you however much your hosting is going to be and the domain name so you need to shop around look online for good deals very often you can get a domain name and some hosting for something like 20 30 quid a year in the first year and then you have to keep moving it around 
between providers because if not the, the prices do go up so it cost me about that to get going i use the free version of wordpress and i always have used the free version of wordpress how it then starts to get expensive is if you then put little add-ons into wordpress so for example i use something called calendly which connects your google calendar to the, your website and goes from that and then that costs you i think it's 20 or 30 quid to set up as a one-time fee so and then if you're going to want to put even more flashier things inside your website that might cost you much i think you could probably get up and running within within a hundred with within a hundred quid i reckon graham um cost you time that's the other thing it does cost you is a bit of time you know it, it's a slow process okay to get yourself learning but once you're up and run then you you go for it okay um hope that answered your question graham uh adele no problem luby when what area are you moving to i don't know if that's aimed at me i think you're talking about someone else which is fine have a little chat amongst yourselves just just pretend i'm not here no problem at all um uh hello marianne uh sorry i'm late to the party don't worry the the the, the coolest people always come late to the party um you might have covered this do you promote yourself on linkedin i have not spoken about linkedin i have never ever had any success at all with linkedin i've never paid to use linkedin but i have set myself up on linkedin and i have set myself um i've got involved in the discussions and that kind of thing on linkedin and never had a single student from it doesn't mean that other people haven't but i personally have never had any success most of my success has come from Facebook, paying for Facebook ads or going in and getting involved in discussions. And then just after I've helped someone out with a question, a student, I'd go into a group for the type of English that I teach. I would um, answer a few questions and I say, OK, if you want more information, here is my website and see if you can get people like that. And Google can help you to find out where you're going to get um, students from. Uh, in you know google has this sort of it's called google analytics and it connects to your website and you can see where students get where students are coming from whether they're coming from a search whether they come from a paid search whether they come from facebook whether they come from twitter that kind of thing i'm a bit of a geek i quite enjoyed learning about all that kind of thing it's a bit of a transferable skill to build a website as well to be honest um good keep the questions coming in thank you very much everybody um is it good to do the TEFL org online teacher course? Graham, yes, I th I really think it is. So what you really need if you're going to go set yourself up is you need some sort of 120-hour course, which gives you the theory behind language learning. And then, and then if you're going to go online, I really recommend that you add on um, the 40-hour course or something like that to really help you um to learn how to take what you've learned as the theory of language learning into an online classroom okay um the reason why i think the tefl org ones are good is because they are written by people who really know what they're doing uh, like myself of course um who, yeah for example i have a master's in english english language teaching i also have a diploma in english language teaching i'm a delta it's called an celta you know all these kind of things and they're really um the courses are written and they're monitored by people who really know their field and know the industry well so that's why i recommend doing the TEFL. they're also accredited by um bodies that have good reputations and are accredited themselves okay um so that's why sales pitch over for Tefl Org, um, but I really do think that the the staff that work there are what makes it the best. Okay, no problem. Um, Kerry, hello. How experienced do you think you need to be to set up your own freelance website? I've just started my Tefl, and this is something I'd like to do in the future. Right, K Kerry, I think that you don't need to be. I think you could come, you could do your 120 hour course, decide what you think you might like, and then build your website. I, I don't think that you need to be that experienced to set it up. Um, does it help to be experienced in teaching English? Yes, it does, because you're going to be creating your own videos um, to try and get yourself out there, putting on YouTube or on Facebook, wherever you're going to do it. And 
if you're experienced, you do tend to know a little bit more what you're talking about and you can get that across more easily. But I don't think that should naturally stop you. Um, I Looking back at when I first started teaching, I think I really wish I'd, I, I'd built a website almost straight away just to advertise myself a bit, to show that I'm a bit I've, I've got the confidence to help myself with jobs to say, look, this is me. This is my application. But I also have a website here. And this is this is me. Let's let's discuss. Let's let's talk about things a little bit. OK, so I really think um, it's worth doing. And if you do the 40 hour uh, teaching English online course, it does give you information on how to set up and promote your online teaching website. OK, so well, it's not just about how to convert your teaching to an online platform, but it also does give you information on the 40 hour course on how to um get yourself out there and how to build your own website okay good um uh right thank you very much uh kerry go for it as well as say uh roland okay um i just right you've, it's not really a question from your other professional background i have never found facebook ads of any of you so you can waste a fortune on them i respectfully roland i know you've been great in these um chats recently i'm just gonna respectfully even with your lovely moustache, respectfully um, disagree with you there because I have found Facebook ads to be useful for myself. OK, I've managed to build up quite a big following and um, managed to get students interacting with me and I've got students from it. So I personally have found Facebook ads to be of use, but I, you are correct. I do know people that have spent a lot of money on it and not got much use for them. OK, good um uh okay andres i'm not quite sure on that i, I wonder if someone else can answer that one for me that question um hello laurie uh carl i have dual nationality french and english been living in england for 40 years should i advertise myself as british um i think you should advertise as what you feel yourself as laurie to be honest if you can speak very good french you might be able to or even native level french you might be able to advertise yourself as Laurie, the French speaker's helper, because you can, <laughs> that's completely made that one up off my head. It wasn't a good one. Don't go with that. Come up with something better. But what hopefully what you can see is you can advertise yourself as the person that can help French speakers to improve, because sometimes it's good to have a dual nationality. So you can say you speak English like a native, uh, native speaker, but you also speak French, something like that. I wouldn't, necessarily advertise yourself as british okay and don't just uh you know i i would i would go problem with the other thing i would say about problem with saying yourself british is a lot and i say this as someone who lives in northern ireland has lived in wales um got married in scotland and spent a big chance of my time in england love all the uk if you advertise yourself as british some people don't know what you're talking about they actually prefer you to advertise yourself as scottish or as english or wherever you're from okay uh Good. OK. Um, Roland, great tip there. Adele, hello. Do you use Pinterest to help with advertising? If so, has this helped you? Adele, I have never used Pinterest at all, apart from um, looking at it when my wife finds something on it that she wants me to do with the house and thinks, is this a good idea? I've never used it to get students. I'm sorry. Sam, uh, how do you source or create material to teach with? OK, so Sam, if you go in on the hundred, if you do the hundred twenty hour course, you'll will learn about the basics of how to create a lesson. And how do I source or create the materials? I find a good text on the BBC website. Other websites are available, or on TED.com if you're doing a listening, something like that. And I get the text, and I see, think, okay, what naturally comes from that? What could I could I make a speaking English a speaking lesson out of that? Could I use that to make a grammar or a vocabulary lesson? Just I source or create it just by the stuff that's around me. OK. Um, and then I think, OK, what are the steps in a grammar lesson going from the lead in through to the free practice? And I think, OK, where does it, this fit in? What activities can I write myself? Just go for it and start to just start to think what kind of lesson you can make for material the materials are all around you use authentic materials that you can find on websites don't make them too long keep them short that kind of thing okay i hope that's answered that question sam um dana um 
Hi, you just mentioned the Celta. Is it worth going for it after a Tefl or course? Right. Okay. Um, right. I f do you know what, Dana? I would suggest with the Celta is it's expensive and it takes a long time to do. Okay. I would, first of all, go with your TEFL org course, go out there teaching. You will get jobs in classrooms for it. You will. Okay. If you're, if you keep going, if you keep applying, if you keep looking, you will get an, a job in a classroom with your TEFL org course, maybe a couple of years, three years down the line. If you still like teaching TEFL, then think about doing a CELTA. I would not go and do the 120 hour TEFL course, then go straight into a CELTA. I think the CELTA would then be a waste of your time. Go through the 120 hour course, get yourself out there teaching. If you like it, then do the CELTA because yes, ultimately it's going to open more doors, but I don't think it's something you need to do straight away. Okay. Yes, Luby, you must. Uh, how long, Louise, hello. How long does it take to get students? The uh, million dollar question, Louise. Um, Depends on you. Are you are you willing to start not charging that much to get the students through the door just to see how you're going? If you're happy to sort of undercut your, undercut your competitors, then it probably won't take you that long to get students. Um, to get a full schedule of online teach students in your website that your own students can take a while. OK, um, you know, you, you could be talking a good few months to get that going. What I find is go work for someone either in a classroom or an online company and then start building your website at the side. Go from that and then just build it up slowly, slowly, slowly. Good. Uh, thank you very much, Louise. Good luck with that. Um, right. I can't keep up with the questions. Mohammed, hello. I have a business company in the study abroad field. Congratulations. Would it be better to market online teaching on my business company or create a personal website? Are you talking for yourself to be a teacher? I would say your own personal website because you're selling yourself, Mohammed. You're not really selling your um, company. OK, that's that's what I would suggest myself. Uh, thank you. Um, OK, Ramona, hello. Uh, from the finance point of view, what is the type of business you are setting up when starting trading? Limited company or self-employed person? Uh, I'm guessing you're in the UK if you're asking that question about a limited company or self-employed person. I am still down as a self-employed person. I prefer it to the limited company thing. Um, but I think an accountant would definitely answer that a bit more than you do. I The reason why I'm self-employed is because I have some money that comes in taxed at source, some money that comes in as uh, self-employed. So for me, I think everybody has a bit of a unique way of doing that. I would go speak to an accountant if you're in the UK. Other countries, tax rules are very different. Go down that. Um, hello, Dana. Do you believe non-native speakers have a chance at anything other than online teaching, working in a school in the UK or other EU country? For example? Yes, for sure, Dana. I, right. So I did recruitment for um, a very well-known um, chain of language. Chain's not the right thing. They're an organization that teaches English, and I did recruitment for some of the companies, for some of the schools that I work for around the world. And we recruited... Even though it was a British company, um, we definitely recruited uh, people whose first language is not the is not English um, and non-native speakers. The level of qualification is just as important. Uh, well, it's more important, actually, more important than the accent or the person's first language. OK, so, yes, you will get work um, definitely around. Think, you know, I, I've worked in places around europe where they have had people whose um first language might be italian so for example in spain i go and work a lot in spain i have um been there and there's been italian teachers working in spain there's been polish teachers working in spain whatever it is okay definitely you will find work um ridwan hello there is a lot there are a lot of job vacancies that requires two years experience of teaching uh once i start online teaching do it for two years can that be classified as experience does it need to be in classroom no because if, if, if it's an online teaching job then they would want online teaching um 
Classroom is a good question. You might need to email the recruiter and find out, but I think probably any type of teaching is nowadays seen as worthwhile experience. Okay, good. Um, Michael, British or American English, what are students looking for? So are they looking for the correct type of English or the other English from across um, the, the world, you know, with all the time zones, American English, basically. Uh, right. Students are looking on the whole. They tend to, first of all, look for good English. Um, you do, unfortunately, see adverts for the wrong type of English, American English. I'm joking here. It is, of course, a great type of English uh, or it's a, just as worthy of one type of English as another. Um, students will look for unfortunately you do see more jobs going for american english than you do for british english but i think on the whole um uh they just look for english as, as just as they're looking for english they're not really looking for any type of thing okay um good um tamarin hello when companies this is an interesting one when companies say teaching experience is required does any teaching experience count or does it have to be english teaching experience um right so if you're going to go teach kids for example uh efl you know if you've got primary school experience in your own country where you teach or senior school experience they would love that i'm sure most recruiters would love that i would say that probably in most counts any type of teaching experience does count but they do like to have tefl experience if you're going for a tefl job of course um again you'd need to contact a recruiter and find out if i was you um but i think probably they would take most types of teaching OK. Uh, good. Um, Andres, hello. Uh, does TEFL org offer a platform to find online lessons? Do you mean to find students? I know it, it doesn't do that. OK, you, you'd have to go find them yourself. Laurie, hello. Uh, the other million dollar question. How much does one charge? I've looked at platforms and the fees are ridiculous given the preparations needed. Agreed. That's one of the reasons why to strike out on your own is a good way of doing it. OK, um, right. I get asked this question a lot. How does how much to charge? And the answer has has never really changed in the years I've been teaching. You charge what you're happy to earn. So if you live in London, you're probably not going to want to earn less than 20 pounds an hour because London is an expensive place to live. OK, if you're in India and you might be able to get by on five, six quid, that might be a good wage for an hour. So how much is one charge? Uh, you charge what you're comfortable to earn, basically. I tend to go by the feeling that you you probably want to earn what the average teacher's salary is in your in your country. Um, there's a college about 200 metres down that way for me that they offer East Seoul lessons to refugees. They pay their teachers around £25 an hour. That's in Northern Ireland. So I would want that for an online lesson. OK. Um, you know, the, the problem, the good thing about teaching online is you can get students from anywhere in the world. The problem with that is you are competing with the rest of the world. OK, so don't be unrealistic and think that you're probably going to, oh, I'm going to earn 50, 60 pounds an hour because are students really going to pay that? Some will. You might be able to get, find some rich Japanese, Saudi Arabian students, something like that, um, who will pay that. The majority of the world won't be able to afford 50 pounds an hour. They might be able to afford 20 pounds an hour. You might then have to go down the group route to get two friends to pay for a lesson and, and do that one. OK, difficult question, Laurie. Whatever you, you're comfortable with. OK, um, thanks for that piece of advice, Ed. Right. So we're coming to the end now. So basically. Right. Building your own website can seem daunting, but. I think the best way to go about it is to to do it as a sideline be between working in a classroom or to work in um, for an online recruiter. Don't think that you'll be able to build a website, get lots of students. You'll be up and running like that in a couple of weeks. It took me a good probably six, seven months of working pretty full on about it to get some online students. So it does take a while to get going and it does, um, you know, it, it, it it's going to be frustrating as well. There are certain frustrations that come with it. OK, but 
look online do you know first of all do a course like the tefl org course to get yourself a good ground in in how to teach english and then think about okay could i add on a 40-hour course that will help me go like that hundreds of people create websites every day you know and and there is a lot of help out there to create a website i would personally go down the wordpress route myself because that is the um way that you'll be able to have the most control over it however i do know people that have, have used wix.com or something like that and they've been able to find a and create a website quite quickly and have that up and running quite quickly don't underestimate the amount you, of time and the amount of money you might need to spend on advertising okay and really look into that before you put down your card details you give mark zuckerberg um your card details because you know you've really got to be aware of what of what you're doing there and start very slowly a dollar a pound a day see how you get from that okay um boost hello um i think we're coming to the end now so if you've got any other questions quickly just enter them if not i'm gonna say goodbye to you guys boost i want to start teaching in spain would you recommend any particular schools companies to apply to um right a lot in in spain a lot of the schools tend to be independent so you you find in a lot of towns there's someone has started a, a language school and that might only be their language school or they might have two or three in the regional area in terms of chains in spain i think uh international house is is quite a big one but i would what i would do is i would think boost where do you want to work in spain right if you and i hope you're not shouting at the screen barcelona or madrid because that can be the diff Diff, one of the difficult places in Spain because lots of people want to live in Spain, want to live in Barcelona, want to live in Madrid. But if you're willing to go to um, some of the towns or cities that are, are still big, still beautiful, but maybe have less competition for students, then you can Google in that town idiomas, language, um, uh, and and see if you can find yourself on Google those towns and apply directly to the language schools that are there. The other option is fly yourself to a city that you know you like, see if you can find a job. You'd be surprised in Spain generally how sort of easy it is to find a few hours for one school, a few hours for another school, a few hours for another school, work yourself around, see if you can go down that route. Okay, I hope that answers your question, Boost. Um, good. Luby, hello uh once you've completed my tefl online course are there any italian equipment so, uh do you mean to to teach italian is that what you're talking about luby um what i i think right the the theory behind language learning isn't necessarily you know the way you learn english is not different from the way you learn effectively italian or japanese or chinese or arabic or russian whatever it might be the theory is transferable so i think you can take what you've learned on the online tefl course and use it to to um uh, to teach to teach italian as well i think does that answer your question uh i think it does i hope it does yeah the, the theory is you don't need to find an italian tefl.org go with you know a good teaching english website take that theory and then just transfer it into um teaching italian okay i hope that answers your question luby um let's just go for five more minutes tamarin hello uh from your experience in setting up for online teaching would you advise that we shouldn't do I, what's a total waste of time oh good one um oh that is a really good question what was a total waste of time for me at the start google ads was a total waste of time to be honest i didn't i didn't really get the hang of that that quickly so i think probably i preferred starting with facebook or something like that um you know i, I if google ads was a bit of a waste of time you you're gonna get time wasters okay um so that's why i think it's it's good to be clear and have a niche because if you're you know be quite upfront with how much you're willing to to earn per hour don't say like contact me for rates um personally myself that's not how the route i don't like to go down because 
if I had contact me for rates, I would have people from all over the world message me saying, I want an hour of English lesson. I'll give you four pounds 20. And then I would have to spend time saying, I'm sorry, that's too, that's too cheap for me. I charge 20 pounds now. And you'd spend a lot of time corresponding with people. And that would be a bit of a waste of time. So you, you at the start, you're going to have a, you're going to have a bit of a waste of time, unfortunately. Okay. Um, Matt, hello. You mentioned going for an agency school first before going solo. Would you say EF, Italki, et cetera? Italki is slightly different. I think that's when you go and doesn't that when you promote yourself? And I think I prom pronounced Italki wrong. Someone corrected me on that the other day. Uh, we, 20 hours of work, pay less. Um, yeah, if they're advertising at the moment, any company, then the reason why they're advertising is because they've got work hours for you. Okay, so yeah, I think... A lot of, lot of recruiters, they like you to start small and then build into it. I will give you four hours a week. We'll give you five hours a week. And then and then you go into it like that one. OK, um, Dave, I would recommend a business Facebook page. That's the one I use. I don't know much difference between the community, et cetera. So there we go. Um, Luby, um, no more for me to better help my prospective students. Uh, I, so what right so do you mean write your website in italian if you're going after italian students then yes write your website in italian that's what i would go for okay um if that makes sense I, i'm still not quite sure what you what you're on about um you be to be honest with you i i think probably it's just me 50 minutes of talking has just made my mind a bit scrambled like that and i've probably lost my train of thought i apologize luby um Irene, yes, they will be shown again after discussion. You can look at the video. So hello. Thank you, everyone. Um, that's the end. That's 50 minutes. That I've been yapping away at you guys. Um, I think thank you very much. Some really interesting questions on there. Building a website. Just have a go at it. All right. OK, just see if you can. Don't be scared of building a website. OK, don't put all your eggs in one basket and think I'm going to just just build my own website and then just just go from go from that and i'm going to be rich within a year or something like that no it does take time i like to be realistic i don't like to just say to him yeah you'll be fine you know it does take time go for it but it's very rewarding once you start getting those students coming to you through the website and through the um through things that you're doing yourself and you can make a bit more money definitely if you're doing your own website okay thank you everybody um if you want to know more, we do these webinars every Thursday or Friday. There are loads. If you keep going back now, I don't know how many we've got now. Probably a bank of eight of them. You know, if you're really bored this weekend, go back and watch me. Or Thomas was also doing some. He's very, very brilliant. Um, very, very brilliant. Shouldn't really adapt uh, adjective like that. Anyway, um, go back and look at them. They're fantastic. And hopefully you'll be able to learn something. And I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye.